Hi, this is Praveena Shetty. This is my first video on research and methodology. Simplification of it basically. In this board, you can see the whole picture of the topic research and methodology and specifically research plan. I've tried to make it compact and put it in one frame in this one board. Let's deal with it one by one. What does basically research means? Research is a systematic collection, analysis, interpretation to solve a problem. Research methodology is a wider concept which includes various research methods, tools, tools and techniques of data collection, methods of data analysis, etc. So basically research methodology is a bigger concept, wider concept than research tools or research methods. When we want to do a research for any purpose for example, you have to have this research plan in mind. Basically, it has about 10 points to be taken into consideration. Let's see this one by one. Let me zoom into the first point. The first point says formulation of research problem. Whenever one wants to do a research, the first thing is to find out what you want to do a research on. You may select it or if you are a part of a research team, you will be sent to go and research and find a solution for a problem via the research. So the first point is formulation of research problem. What the problem you should take as research for research. The second point is extensive survey of literature. Now, this is done. The second step is taken to see whether someone else have already done a research on it. Can you better it? Is the survey which was done earlier or the research that was done earlier relevant in today's time? Studying this literature, you may come with another problem which you would like to dwell deep into and research further. So you will look into the survey of literature to find out whether your formulation of research problem was the right one or you need to make some changes. Once the research problem is properly founded, then you go to the third one, development of hypothesis. Hypo, less, thesis, a theory. So hypothesis is something which is a little less than a theory. Now if there can be a null hypothesis also here. What you can do is for example set saying that for example if you make steps fun then people will stop using the escalator. This can be your hypothesis. Later on you after research you can you know either say yes I was right or I was wrong when you test your hypothesis. So you frame a kind of a sentence which you're going to prove at the end of this research. So development of hypothesis. Next comes processing the research design. Uh, I'm sorry, preparing the research design. You can actually stop it wherever you want and then can get this picture of uh, this uh, tabular form I have made it in. You know, you can pause it and you can then write it down if you want to write it. Uh, the fourth one is preparing the research design. Very important step in the planning. Here you will design the sample. You will dis dis actually f uh, think about what is or what will be your sampling design. How will you observe the design? What will be the statistical uh, way of dealing with the design? 
operational design how this first three sampling observation and statistical part will be taken care and put into practical uh, usage so all this will have to be thought before you actually take on the ground and do research part of it so this whole 10 points will have to be thought before it's like a blueprint a builder makes so he makes the build, uh, blueprint before he builds the building and if he finds any problem he is able to solve it at the thinking level and then when he actually does it in practice there will be less problems for him to handle in the later stages so here is actually how logically one can uh, go about doing that research that is the fourth step now let's zoom in to the fifth point the fifth point is determining the sample design now what do you mean by sample if you're cooking a dish before you give it to somebody you'll taste so that's a sample of the whole dish and you will uh, depending on that you'll say ah this dish is really very good in the same way you cannot take the population that's in crows for example you can take a sample of that uh, of that population so a sample should properly represent a population suppose um, i'm in the field of yoga so if i go to a yoga class and if i want to interview them you know, so that will be the best place for me to find a sample I, if I stand uh, at uh, any uh, near a college and and I say okay please come and you know you talk about yoga or give me this uh, question I filled up then it may not be the right sample. So what sh what is my total population and where can I find my right sample? So determining the sample design. So there are two ways of doing it. Methods of collecting samples. Uh, it is probability method or it is the random method the probability method is a very good method where everybody feels that they have a chance in get being a sample you know getting through and being a sample in that experiment for example if 10 people are there in the first method for example simple random sampling it's like a lottery system so if i go to a school and i tell you know everybody write a, your name on a chit and i put it put it in a bowl in front of me and everybody like 50 children they come and they put that chit so everybody has a chance in that it may be a lottery system but there is a chance like if there's 50 so every child has one by 50 chance in that 50 one by 50 one person chance in that that's a simple random sampling in systematic random sampling it's a little uh, systematic in the sense maybe the first the fifth the tenth so or the odd numbers are taken in the third stratified random sampling for example in army female number is very less so if there are if you're taking a sample of 50 and in the 50 if you have only one female then the lottery system may not work and the female will get no chance in that so a different method is developed here that's called the stratified random sampling then there's cluster or area random sampling for example again if i take the same example of the classroom in the classroom if i want to find out who is staying uh, or who's from the north Okay, then I would want only those children to come and uh, be a part of that research. Then I cannot take all the 50. So if 15 children are there, 1, 5, 15 children, then in that I may take a lottery system. Yeah, so that is cluster or area random sampling. This is a probability method, chance method. Now non-probability method. Okay, Suppose I am a little lazy and convenience is more important for me sampling and I don't have much time. So I go to a school which is just next to my house. So that becomes and take 50 students from there, you know, so that becomes convenient sampling. The second is accidental sampling. I'm sitting at my home, people are coming uh, for tuitions and I tell them, okay, okay please, uh, since you have come here, I will, uh, you, you do this uh, research for me, you know, the fill up the questionnaires for me. So that becomes like accidental. They just accidentally they happen to be there and I've uh, give them, given them the questionnaire. Judgment. Suppose a friend of mine is a teacher in a school, I tell, okay, you judge which are the best students in your class and give me 
those best students to fill up my question here. So that is judgment basis. Now these are all very easy examples, may not fit right away into it but the whole idea is just understand the basic part of it and then one can dwell dep uh, deeply and find much more about it in you know in the course of study. Then there's quota. For example, I have a school, again I'm uh, going back to the school, it's become a little easier example for me, that's the reason. Quota, what happens, suppose I have three schools, one is really near to me, so I take 80% of my questioners filled up from that school and then I go to a school that's a little far away and then take the 20%. So I allot a kind of quota system, snowball system. For example, I go and I um, some children come to my house for tuition, for example. Then I tell them, okay, tomorrow you, I, I'll give you the sweets, you fill up this questionnaire. Tomorrow, if you get two more, then I will give you two more sweets. So the next day, four of them come. Next day, eight of them come. I don't know exactly what number I'm looking for. It's just snowballing. It is becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. So this is more of a convenience kind of a thing, this non-probability method, but not everybody gets a uh, part uh, or gets a, even a chance to be a part of that sample and probably method is a better method, but sometimes the situation needs one to take this non-probability method also. Now let's see the next one. The next one is after you have decided what is your sample. Then you go to them and collect the data. Now when you are collecting data, it can be divided into two again. Primary data collection method or secondary data collection method. Primary method, you have this survey or interview which can be structured, non-structured, open-ended, no, closed-ended. It can be very formal, it can be very informal. Then it can be observation method also where you go and observe and uh, like for example in a mall you want to find out uh, where people go more, to which shop people go, uh, go more. So there will be an observer who will be just standing and seeing the, uh, you know, how many people are going to each of this, uh, each of this uh, places. Now that is an observation method. Now here what is happening is it can be subjective, you know, it depends upon the researcher. It can be a little biased. So this is observation method. Experimentation method, of course, is an experiment conducted where there's a controlled group, where there's an experimental group, and then you come to a conclusion. Then there's a questionnaire method where you give a questionnaire which can be open-ended, closed-ended, it can be pictorial type of a type of a questionnaire, and they have to either tick it or they have to write yes, no. So that's a question method. So all this comes under the structured form and that is primary data collection method. Then comes the secondary data collection method. It is very difficult, very uh, time consuming, money consuming uh, to do primary data all the time. So one fall back on secondary data uh, collection method. Now if it is done uh, for the office for example, then you could do it internally and uh, see, look at the uh, earlier product sales analysis, do the financial analysis, uh, see, go through that, go through the project reports done so far. And internally you come to a conclusion and your research is done. External, uh, you can fall back on your library, you can fall back on the published matter, uh, you can also fall back on people who have earlier done primary, uh, you know, a primary uh, data collection and uh, see that and then arrive at a conclusion for your research. So these types of methods can be used for collecting the data. Now once the data has been collected, then it has to be processed. Like the processing is wrong, right? it's like a link between the first, uh, first uh, six of them and the uh, re next three of them. So if this processing is not right, then all the effort goes uh, really uh, down the drain. It's processing of data. Here computers, statisticians all come into picture. Uh, you have to do editing like for example if you are on the field and if you want to immediately edit the questionnaire then you edit on the field and if it can wait and you can go for a uh, central where all the questionnaires come get accumulated and a person is uh, you know they are editing it so either on the field or in the central then you have to code it give the numbers uh, give it a you know, code uh, it becomes easy to feed it in the computer later on then classify maybe in the age in uh, form of income you can classify it then uh, if you want to make it a tabulation form under table form then you do the tabulation form of it it becomes easy then to analyze it which is the next step analysis of data in analysis of data 
there are uh, various uh, analysis that can uh, you can opt for the first one is the descriptive analysis in descriptive analysis after you have done your processing of data you see the data and then you find the mean that is the average okay, average part of it or you go in for the median median is how frequent that number is coming mode measure of dispersion how uh, how is it uh, away how is it away from the central uh, point how much of a dispersion it is all this is a descriptive analysis now in inferential analysis the testing of the hypothesis is done whether what you had earlier said whether that is right or wrong if the probability at the end of the calculation is less than 0 0.05 that's 0 0.05 uh, if it is less than 0 0.05 that's five, not even 5% five then uh, the chances it should be less than 0 0.05 you know for that research to really tick off if the probability is 0 that means uh, that event will never happen and if the probability is equal to 1 that means that event will surely happen this is a little bit of technical part. Uh, try, I'm trying to deal it a little in an easy uh, manner. Then comes uh, the third one that is re re relational analysis. Under this you have univariate analysis. Here there is one variable only. You have to look after one variable. For example murder. So you go and you uh, you decide he's a murderer okay so one he's a murderer second by variate is there are two variables here he's a murderer and he's also mean so what will you give him you know what punishment the third is multivariate analysis the more than three variables are there for example he is a murderer he was mean too and he also carried a gun so it's quite intentional you know so the cause and the effect part of it so more than two so such type of analysis is carrying uh, carried about now the example may not be that right but uh, more importantly is to understand that the, how the variables change in this variable uh, in this um, different analysis now once you analyze the whole thing then you go to the ninth one and the ninth one is generalization and interpretation whether it can be generalized in the same situation will that thing happen again and again you, can you form a theory can you come to a conclusion uh, that will be dealt in in this generalization and interpretation so if your processing of the data is good and if the analysis of data is good then on this depends your generalization and interpretation and then we come to the last point this preparing a report now preparing a report as it says up is an art you do this while having uh, when you write your recitation uh, when you write a thesis for your PhD doing your MPhil, uh, you prepare your report and basically it is divided into three parts. The first part is preliminary page where you write the title of your research, your acknowledgement where you thank everybody, table of contents, what are the contents of that uh, whole thesis, the list of uh, tables and illustration if you have any uh, tables. Uh, put up their illustrations then you give all the list of that in the preliminary page then you go to the main text where you write the introduction what was your research what was your findings what is the main report and implications what was your conclusion and summary so briefly you uh, you know you come to the core point of it that's the main text and then you go to the end matter of your writing where you write your appendix you can put up uh, in your appendix you can uh, put up all the uh, for example the questionnaires you have uh, you have uh, collected uh, you can put up uh, the uh, format of it then the bibliography uh, whom you really want to thank in the sense you have collected material from different books the source of it the index part of it all this has to be done thought about initially in the research plan so before you actually sit and think about doing a research go through in your mind what should be the research plan and then get into action this is the thinking part of it the theory part of it is the theory part of it if you get it right then when you do your dissertation when you write your thesis you would not go wrong when you're in the uh, 
uh, field collecting your samples uh, you will get a major help major boost if this 10 points of yours is proper thank you for listening uh, to research and methodology i hope this is uh, helpful to you i would try and put a copy of this can and put a copy of uh, this on uh, youtube uh, but uh, my major subject is uh, yoga's patanjali yoga sutra where i take a uh, six days uh, crash course in uh, mumbai um, chembur the india uh, and if you are interested, do write to me at v3ps at redifmail.com. That is v3ps at redifmail.com. This is Praveena Shetty uh, signing off from this page of research and methodology. Thanks for your patience.